Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this hour. Your word is before us to meditate upon. We desire that, Lord, the meditation of our hearts, Lord, will be acceptable unto you, even as you cause also the words of my mouth to be acceptable unto you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of the Lord. We thank the Almighty God for yet another round of confirmation in the Diocese of Worry. This remains a tradition that our forefathers has left for us to continue in. And it shall continue for as long as Christ tarries. So this day, we are beginning with the cathedral for the year 2018, and that is how it has been. Cathedral being the seat of the bishop and every other church in the diocese look up to the example laid in the cathedral. So we thank God for keeping all of us alive that for this year's confirmation and admission into the guilds, the unions, and the fellowship, that we'll be witnesses of it. Again, we say to God, be the glory in Jesus' name. And uh, I will not cease to or be tired of giving thanks to you good people of the cathedral for the support, unflinching support we continue to get from you for the work of God to advance in worried houses. Well, thank you and thank you and thank you again. And even as we thank you again and again, our desire is that God will also bless you again and again. So even this moment, we say, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, confirmation, admission of guilds, admission into the guilds and the unions. Of course, we have the girls' guild, we have the women's guild, and we have the Christian men's fellowship, which is a new one, new by two years or thereabouts since we started. And then uh, it is part of the groups the church has taught wise to put in place so that we can be groomed in the faith. We can grow in the faith. And so the girls' guild for the girls, the women's guild for the women generally, while the mother's union for the married, because the message that we go for those who are married is quite different from those that we go generally to everyone. And those who are married, husband and wife, properly married in church, they have a message. When you read the scriptures, you will see that the scripture also put aside specific messages for those who are properly married. So the mother's union stands for that, to see that there is sanctity in marriage when you are a married man, a married woman. So too for the Father's Union, sanctity of marriage is the emphasis. And once you put that right, then it is believed that every other thing you also put right so that this heaven, you will not miss it. Just as it is for the generality of the women, for the women's gate, so it is for the generality of the men in the Christian men's fellowship that nobody is left out, nobody is left out, that we all stand firm in this faith and we find a place we can be to be nurtured in it because this Sunday, Sunday service is not enough, not enough at all, not enough at all. So we need to come to church weekdays, you know, during the days of the week to still receive from the Lord so that one day when Jesus comes, we will not miss that heavenly throne. 
And this, as I said, our church fathers are put together to see that uh, the church is prop properly uh, grown. And so we thank God for all of you who understand this and have made yourselves available to be admitted today. And for those who have been prepared for the baptism in the spirit, that is confirmation, we also thank you for making yourselves available. And the message as it comes now is to give you a final opportunity to listen and know what is required of you if you must be baptized in the spirit. Because it is not just presenting yourself. Well and good, you have presented yourself. But in presenting yourself, there are certain requirements for you to be accepted, for the Holy Spirit to really come upon you and be baptized. And so the message we have now is to give that final preparation. Uh, for those of you who uh, fly uh, in the air, that's by plane, you will see that uh, when the plane takes off, when the plane takes off and is to land, it gets to a point, they will say final preparation for landing. Final preparation for landing. So many things that have been put in place, then they will tell you at a point, now this is final preparation for landing. Put on your seat belt, do this, no movement, all that and that, sit this way, sit erect, make sure your chair is properly uh, erect, no relaxing, Start, sit erect, and all that will be told you. Final preparation for landing so that nothing goes wrong. This is final preparation for landing, this message that is coming to you right now. You have been taught a lot, you know, in preparing for this confirmation. But listen again, some of these things you have been taught will be reaffirmed, will be repeated now in this message. And you may just get one or two things, you know, that will just help you. So that when you come forward, for hands to be laid on you, you cannot go back the same. We have titled the message, therefore, for this morning now, The Holy Spirit in Christians. The Holy Spirit in Christians. That is the title. And it's taken from John chapter 14, verse 17, the text. The portion we read for the gospel. John chapter 14, verse 17. And that place says, using the, the New King James Version, it said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Of course, the spirit of truth then is the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ is talking about. For he's with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit in Christians, in you, that Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit. And we see, therefore, so much to get from here, as we're going to see now. As we read from Jeremiah chapter 31, the gospel, I mean the Old Testament reading this morning, we read from Jeremiah chapter 31. If you listen carefully to that passage, read verse 33, there the Lord made it clear that the Israelites, he made it clear to the Israelites in Jeremiah's time, and what did he make clear to them? That he was going to put his law in the minds of his children and write it in their hearts. So the Holy Spirit in Christians. So God said, I'm going to put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. It's going to be inside. Inside them. The Holy Spirit in Christians. So when you talk of the mind and the heart, as mentioned together here, working together, it has to do with our reasoning. God said, I'm going to put my law in their mind and in their heart. That is to say God is going to impact on our reasoning, the way we reason, mind and heart. On our reasoning, 
on our thinking, on our feeling, the way we think, the way we feel, is going to impact on the way we make decisions and the way we act as we begin to behave. And at the end of all this, the way we reason, the way we think, the way we feel, the decisions we make, we reveal, and the actions we take, we now reveal who we really are. And what is God's expectation as to who we should be is that we should become his people. And that's in verse 33. That is it. So I'm going to put my law into your mind, into your heart, so that as you begin to reason, as you begin to think, as you begin to feel, as you begin to act, as you begin to take decisions, it will be said, anybody that sees you, that yes, this is a child of God. These are my people by the way you reason, by the way you think, by the way you feel, by the way you act. These are my people. That was a promise that God made through Jeremiah in his time. Because it was already very clear that the, people, the way the people were reasoning at that time, the way they were thinking, the way they were feeling, the way they were making decisions, the way they were acting, they were not in any way showing that they were the children of God. That's why God said, I'm going to do something about that. Don't forget the topic or the theme for this message, the Holy Spirit in Christians. We are going somewhere. Now, the law that the law says it was going to put in these children's mind and heart that's what he said i'm going to put in your heart in your mind so that you can really become the law i'm going this is the law the law is what i'm going to put in your mind and in your heart that will change your reasoning your feeling your thinking your acting and everything your behavior everything now this law which the law said it was going to put in their hearts so that they can become his people god was saying this is it now, this law, what is it? Is it the Ten Commandments in our own time now? Is it the Ten Commandments that we know which is the law? The Decalogue? Is it it? Thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do that. Is it the law? You know? But when you look at where we have read this morning from First Peter chapter 2, verse 8, verse 9, you will get a picture as to what the Lord was saying, after some time, this is what I'm going to do. And it has happened already in our time. And what is in that first Peter, chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9? We see there that actually because God was saying, when I, this new law, this one I'm going to put is the new covenant. It's not the old one. So what is this new covenant? What is this new covenant? Of course, we know that this new covenant came to be following the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, Jeremiah, God was actually through Jeremiah revealing that time that this Jesus Christ was going to come into this world. He was going to die and he's going to resurrect. In fact, that is a pointer to the law. But as I said, if you read First Peter chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, which was the episode for this service, you will see it clearly there. That verse 9 says, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Can you hear that? That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Now look at verse 10. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Can you see how it has come to pass? See, you will be my people. By the time I change your reasoning, I change your thinking, 
I change your feelings. I change your, the way you make decisions. I change the way you act. You will not be my people. Because right now, you are not my people by your behavior. So we see that this has come to pass through Jesus Christ in our lives. Praise the Lord. So the law that God promises to put in their heart or in their mind, in their mind and in the heart of his own children so that they can be his own people is actually Jesus Christ himself. Is somebody following me? It's Jesus Christ himself. That's it. And so, in John chapter 14, verse 17, which is our text, where Jesus Christ was not talking there, and say that, look, this is what I'm going to do. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be, he was talking about the future now, and will be in you. Of course, it's the Holy Spirit that we have come to talk about at this Holy Spirit baptism service. That's him. That's him. And it becomes very clear that this law is Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ cannot come into us and live out the Holy Spirit. Where you find Jesus, you find the Holy Spirit. That's why in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, he said, any that does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Don't belong to Jesus. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, and who is the Spirit of Christ? The Holy Spirit. So as Jesus enters into us, so when, often when we lead people to Christ, so say, give your life to Christ, and say, okay, open your mouth now, confess your sins. After confessing your sins, we now say, okay, invite Jesus into your heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come in to stay. Never go away again. We don't stop there. We say, Holy Spirit, also come in. That's the indwelling. It will not come in into us. And so we want to strongly believe that all of you who have presented yourself for confirmation this morning is that the Holy Spirit is already in you. It has to be amen. Because that's what you, you used in convincing us that we must lay hands on you today. And what did you show to us? Is your baptismal certificate. Is there anyone who didn't show baptismal certificate here? I know. The priest had to insist, where is your baptismal certificate? Because the day you are baptized in the, into Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into you. He dwells, he dwells you. That is it. The Holy Spirit in Christians. So if you look at that John chapter 14 verse 17, you see that this Holy Spirit has no business with unbelievers. Look at that place again. Look at that place again. That John 14, 17. He said the spirit of truth whom the world cannot what? Receive. It's not possible. It's not possible. So we don't have the Holy Spirit in unbelievers. It's not possible. So this Holy Spirit in Christians. So once it dwells in us, the next thing that will follow is to fill us. You see, because when you put a, a, anything in a container, it's already inside there, isn't it? Sometimes it can be half full. It can be three quarter full. But it's already there. It's not full. But by the time you continue to add, you see it will now fill up. That is what the Holy Spirit does. For those who already are indwelt by him. And that is where the Holy Spirit baptism comes. And that is why the Bible is very careful to use the correct, the correct word to capture the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And what word? The correct preposition. 
So in, in, inside. That's a preposition. In the inside. But when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the preposition that is used is on, upon, on top. So what is inside, it will now fill up. And that's why in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, we are told that, and they were what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. That was the day of baptism. And that has to be your experience today. Somebody listening to me. That has to be your experience today. So the day you give your life to Christ and the Holy Spirit comes into you, a lot of things will change in your life. That is the... A lot of things will change in your life. But beginning from the day that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come in a new and more powerful sense. It's already at work inside you. That is why he convinced you to come today so for hands to be laid on you. It's already at work, at work inside you because it's already dwelling in you. But up by reason of the baptism, it will now come in a new way and in a, a more powerful sense that you have never experienced. And that was the experience of the disciples in the early church on the day of Pentecost. So, have you given your life to Christ? The certificate tells us you have. But God knows whether you have or not. He knows. Because it's a thing of the heart. That's why I said in that Jeremiah, he said, I will put my law in your mind and in your what? In your heart. He said, so this has to do with the mind and the heart. Not the face. Not what you carry along, around. Not what you show anybody. It is something that is inside there. Well, anyway, people will get to know too. They may just be able to guess. But if they have the discernment of the Holy Spirit, it's no more guessing that they will be able to know for sure that something has happened in your inside. Because the way, as I said, now, the way you begin to think, as you open your mouth to talk, you see, you must be a child of God. You say, ah, the way I feel today. And people, you express that feeling. You say, it must be a child of God. The kind of decisions you make concerning your business, concerning your education, concerning your marriage. You say, it must be a child of God. It's only believers that take this kind of decision. And that's why and we, heaven will now begin to acclaim. Say, yes, this is God's child. Praise the Lord. The disciples qualified for this before the baptism in the Spirit. Because they were in the upper room. They were waiting. They were praying. They had already been separated from the rest of the world at that time. They had become different people. The way they reasoned there was quite different from the others. Because if you read that Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, when the, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came on them, you will see that it was a different kind of people as compared with the rest of the world that was gathered in Jerusalem at that time, observing the Pentecost. And we read all that. Let's take some of that now. And you see. So, expect something that you have never experienced before as this baptism in the Holy Spirit takes place today. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. And for those of us who have been confirmed before today, put this side by side now. I'm going to make eight points now. Or seven points. I'm going to make seven points now. Just watch, check your life too now. Just check whether these things are in oppression in your life. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, as I said, the Holy Spirit is already at work in you. But when he, you are baptized in, in Him, this Holy Spirit, it comes in a new way and in a more powerful sense than where you are coming from. 
and look at what happened, looking at the experiences of the disciples when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Acts chapter 2, verse 44, point number 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. Somebody there? Acts chapter 2, verse 44, point number 1. There. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. They all walked in love. Love. They all walked in love. Can you hear that? They were together in that upper room quite well. But the level changed. The love was kindled. They added more fire to it. When they became filled, baptized. In Acts chapter 2, 44. Why? Because if you read Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It said, the God has poured into our hearts. It has poured into our hearts. Love through his Holy Spirit. That is one thing the Holy Spirit does. Yes, one of the fruit of the Spirit is love, isn't it? But it will be more of fire when you are baptized. Those of us who have been confirmed, is that your story? Before today, is that your story? Instead of loving, you are hating, there's something wrong. Check it. That has to happen after today. Number two, they walked in the light. They walked in the light. Acts chapter 2, verse 13. Look at what is in chapter 2, verse 13. That place says, Others mocked, said, Others mocking, said, They are full of new wine. Where am I coming from? Because at that time, they thought that these people were drunk. They were drunk. And so, they were confused people. That was what the entire world thought that was gathered. Looking at them at that time. But they were not drunk. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, Turn there. Ephesians, the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You will see what was happening. It was not drunk, drink, uh, uh, they were not drunk. They, it was not uh, drinking and uh, revering. But see what was happening. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 3 and then look at verse 18. Verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Because part of it was drunkenness. They thought they were drunk. Something that is embarrassing. But see what was happening to them. They walked in the light. Verse 18 of that Ephesians chapter 5. And there we read that, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with what? The Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that was in control. They were walking in the light of God. They were not doing their things their own way. It was the way the Lord ordered it that was walking in the light. Once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you cannot but walk where? In the light. Sinful ways will not be your portion. Nobody will claim to see you to be a drunk anywhere. And it will be corroborated. No way. Your life is different. As I said, this is heightened when you are baptized in the spirit. Otherwise, just giving your life to Christ, you, this is the way of life you should go. But once you have given your life to Christ and baptized, there is a higher degree of walking in the light 
Of course. Number three, your vessel will be clean. Verse 11 of that same Acts of the Apostle. We are still looking at chapter 2 of that Acts of the Apostle. Look at verse 11. You see what they were told there. Are you there? Verse 11 says, We hear them speaking, or Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of what? Of God. And when you compare it to what is in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, you will see something there. Can you turn there? Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And you will see something that is really very, very disturbing. Look at verse 4. Why those people open their mouths? What were they doing with their own mouths? Because the point we want to make here now is that your vessel will be clean. This is your mouth. Will be engaged with things that are clean. Things that are right. Not the other way around. Because that story in Genesis chapter 11 is talking about the Torah of Babel. But look at verse 4. Why they wanted to open their mouth and talk at all. Verse 4 of that Genesis chapter 11 says, so Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a Torah that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Selfishness. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. They wanted to make a name for themselves, not for this God. They were ready to take the place of God. But you see the Acts of the Apostles, where we read now from this chapter 2, verse 13, verse 11. You will see that their own mouth at this time was to glorify God, not to be opposed to him. Clean vessels. So as you become baptized in the spirit, this is your mouth. When it is open, it is always to glorify God. I don't know whether I'm speaking to somebody who has been confirmed before today. How do you use your mouth? In that your workplace. In that your neighborhood. Even in the church. Standing committee. When you open to make contributions, what do you say with your mouth? Does it build or it scatters? Husband and wife. What do you say to each other with your mouth? Does it build your spouse? Or it demoralizes it? him or her. Brothers and sisters, what do you say to one another in your homes? Does it encourage or discourage? Discourages. This mouth. Clean vessels. Nothing defiling. This Holy Spirit, because he's holy, that is it. These are things that are not emphasized. I know what you want me to speak about now that you will now receive power. To speak in tongues, power. To cast out demons, power. To prophesy, power. To perform miracles, and all those ones. All those ones will come up with baptism. But these things, these ones can be easily overlooked and talking about now. And if you miss these ones, that power will be gone. That people will still see and say, ah, it is the Holy Spirit walking in him or her. That's why the Bible says we should be careful of the little foxes that spoil the vines. Little foxes that spoil the vines. Little things. These things you see now, you are not walking in love, you are not walking in the light, your vessel is not clean. And you have the gift to prophesy. You have the gift to cast out demons. You have the gift to speak in tongues. You have the gift to interpret. You have the gift to heal somebody. And all these things are not in your life. You will do all this and at the end, you will miss heaven. That is not our portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number four. Number four. That same Acts chapter 2, verse 11. See, they praised and gave thanks to God. That same chapter 2, verse 11. Still look at that place. It says, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of of God. The wonderful works of what? Of God. They were praising this God for his wonders. I 
And let's turn back now to that Ephesians which we have been referring to. That same Ephesians chapter 5. Let's corroborate what we are talking about now. Look at it from that verse 18 through to verse 20. Verse 18 through to verse 20. I said, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to all for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms and hymns and making melody in your heart. In fact, when you give your life to Christ, really, one of the signs is that the kind of songs you sing will change. I've said it many times. Before I gave my life to Christ, I love Bob Marley. Bob Marley. I had all his uh, cassette. It is cassette in those days, not CD. Cassette. Play them. Play, play, and play. Morning, evening, and night. I play, and play, and play, and play, and play. But when I gave my life to Christ, whether consciously or unconsciously, I saw my table where I had, you know, those, uh, you know, we had a double play those days. Those that are elderly will not understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, you have this uh, player, CD cassette player, and sometimes it's double. You see one uh, head here, the other one here. So you plug here, yeah, after that you finish, the other one will continue. Uh -huh. So you arrange all the cassettes or the tables away on the rack. But when I gave my life to Christ, whether consciously or unconsciously, in, our, in my consciousness and in my unconsciousness, I saw all those, all those cassettes give way and being replaced by other cassettes. I know one, one I loved so much then was Mary McKee and the Genesis. Those that are old in... Uh, the Christian faith will understand what I'm talking about. Mary Mackey and the Genesis. I saw, I started for collections, putting them. I play and play morning to night. That is what we're talking about here. You will see yourself praising God. When you wake up in the morning, it is praises. You are in your office, it is praises. You are in your room, it is praises. Even in the toilet, it is praises. In your car, it is praises. Praises and praises and praises. And even when things are going wrong, it looks like there are attacks here and there. It is still praises and praises. No complaints. This is what the Holy Spirit can do for you when you are baptized. He will bring it up. And as you are doing that, you may just discover that you will no longer need to pray when there are challenges. It will just praises and praises. When you are prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed concerning the thing and nothing seems to be happening, the Holy Spirit will just tell you it is time to continue to praise. Just be praising God. Be praising. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here now who has prayed and prayed concerning something. You are saying, ah, this man, don't tire me. Just enter into praises. You will get your breakthrough. Yeah. I mean, I need a better amen. Yeah. That is what the Holy Spirit can do. For us. Number five, they had the right relationship with one another. There was no pride, there was no suspicion, there was no jealousy, there was no negative criticism. Look at that Acts of the Apostles again. Chapter 2. Look, the same chapter 2. Well, let's go down to verse 46. Chapter 2, verse 46. Or well, particularly the B part of that 46. It says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of what? Of heart. No jealousy. No suspicion. I suspect this one I wish. I'm not going to eat your food. In no day. No pride. See what I mean? You know how we have one come? All this kind of plate when I want to chop to just had to chop with rubber plates. Now correct. Correct ceramic plates. Now they take chop. I can't sit down with another chop for you. No pride. No pride. No jealousy. Say, now then, now then, now then. Get past. They're too good. That's why they carry the food. Come, we go come share. They, 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 
jealousy. Nothing like that. As I said, no negative criticism. If at all they had to criticize, it is constructive. They know that this thing is wrong. Like the Grecian Jews and the Hebraic Jews had in Acts chapter 7. They had something like that later. So these people are, this is not favorable. And the, actual, the, the, the apostles acted immediately and corrected it. So no negative criticism. So when the Holy Spirit has baptized you, now so, you know, go just open your mouth to talk and talk. No pride. No suspicion. You see, we do all things together. Number six, they were prayerful. Tell somebody they were prayerful. That is where you will receive, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, that is where you will receive the ability to speak in tongues. Because there is a tongue of angels to pray with. This is where it becomes applicable. You know, remain the same. When you are praying and praying in Yoruba, praying in Isoko, praying in Nijo, praying in Yoruba, praying in Ausa, Pray in Igbo. And you are short of words. You don't know what to say again. Pray in English. The next thing is to blast into tongues. Angelic language. It comes with this baptism. Can you see? That's why I said the level, your level will change. There will be more power. And more powerful sense. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your prayer life will change. If you allow this Holy Spirit to use you, that you used to pray five minutes, ten minutes, and you are tired, you will pray five hours. It will look like you have not started. This Holy Spirit. Of course, number seven, which is the last point I want to make here. This Holy Spirit. This law that God said is going to put in our hands so that we will be his children. Which I have said is the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself. That when he comes, apart from the indwelling in us, this Holy Spirit, he will come in a new and powerful way. Number seven is that we will not be bold in witness. We be bold in what? Witness. That's to tell somebody about Jesus. And that is verse 42. Oh, I didn't mention that of prayer just now. It just occurred to me now. That of the passage for prayer is verse 42. That's in Acts chapter 2. Let us still read it before I go to this last point. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, talking about prayer. It says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines, breaking and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in what? Prayers. 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 And so, that is it. Then, as I said, the last point, they were bold in witness. Look at verse 14. And then, chapter 4, verse 31. Verse 14. It says, Peter, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice. How did he do? What did he do with his voice? He raised it. I don't know if he closed my mouth. He raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Of course, you know where they are coming from. You know where they were before Peter opened his mouth to say this? They locked themselves up. Oh. When you read chapter 1, they locked themselves up for fear of these Jews. Make them not kill them. They locked themselves up. But when the Holy Spirit came and people started running down to say, What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? They didn't say, ah, they don't come out, they don't come out, they won't kill us now, lock the door tight. They opened the door down and declared with boldness the power 
of this living God through Jesus. Now look at chapter 4, verse 31. To end there. Chapter 4, verse 31. Are we there? It says, Him God has exalted. He was still speaking. Why they were on trial. Him God has exalted. That is this Jesus. To, to his right hand. To be prince and savior. To give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of what? Of sins. He had to declare. This is it. This is the message. This Jesus. God has lifted him up. Oh, whether you like it or not. Because. At that time, Peter and Co, they were challenged. In fact, they were arrested. And they challenged them. Say, say something. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you talking about this Jesus? And they beat their chest and they came out. And declared with more boldness. I tell you, that your office, that your school, even your parents, and it is in, with all humility that don't know Jesus, you will be bold. That's your principle as a student. You will be bold to approach him or her. Even your pastor, even your pastor, you will be bold. The Lord may just reveal something to you about your pastor. And say, this is not right in your, the life of your pastor. You will be bold to walk to the vicarage. And say, pastor, thus saith the Lord. This Holy Spirit. We had this on the school just now. That was what somebody mentioned. He mentioned Leah Sharibu. Isn't it? Bold. If you want to cut my neck, cut my neck. This Jesus... I will not deny. That is the ultimate of this power. In the market, you will show it. In the office, you will show it. In your school, you will show it. In that your neighborhood, you, you will show it. You can't hide it. That is the ultimate of this power. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. So we won't just close our mouth and declare nothing about this Jesus. Can we stand up? And so when the Holy Spirit comes, there will be empowerment for all this and many more. Demonstration of God's power. Just as we see happening in our cathedral, I've said it today at the, at, the, at the Sunday school. People trooping in to see the power of God at work here. All that are going on. But as they come and they see that we don't walk in love. Error. As they come and they see that we don't walk in the light. No miracles are going on. Error. When they come and they see that our vessels are not clean. They hear of fornication, adultery, here and there. Error. When they come and they see that we don't have right relationship with one another. Some of us are proud. Some of us suspect one another. Some of us are jealous. Some of us have criticisms here and there. Anyhow. Error. Though the power of God is at work. Miracles, signs and wonders are happening. When they come, they see that we are not even prayerful. It is only when we come and gather like this, where we are expecting miracles, we pray. But when we go to our different other places, different places, we are prayerless. When they see we don't even have the courage to tell somebody, Jesus Christ is Lord. As we are strolling out of this place, having experienced the atmosphere of miracles here, and you should hold hands together. What are you discussing as you are going along the way, like those two uh, disciples to Emmaus? What are you discussing with each other? Nothing about Jesus. You have heard the word of God now. Can you begin to pray for yourself? Forget somebody else. Pray for yourself.
Those of us who are to be confirmed today. Those of us who are to be admitted. Girls guild, women's guild. Christian men's fellowship. Mother's union. Father's union. Those of us who have been admitted before now, those of us who have been confirmed before now, the Lord has a message for every one of us. Say something to the Lord in prayer. Say something to the Lord in prayer. What has he told you? The Holy Spirit in Christians. When he comes, he comes in a more powerful sense. In a new and more powerful sense when we are baptized. We can't remain the same. The world will know that something is happening around us. Pray that you will be so positioned for the Holy Spirit to use you. And you who are to be confirmed, pray that today you will not miss this opportunity. Pray. Let thy living water flow over my soul. Let thy Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto thee I roll. Father, 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 sing to Jesus, 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 sing to thy spirit. to do something in your life now tell him to do something in your life with the message that has come the Holy Spirit indwells and infills only believers not unbelievers who are you do you belong to the people of God what is God's desire it's God's desire oh to Jesus I surrender said something to the Lord, whatever you have told him, indicate by just putting up your hand and I will just pray for you now, that whatever you have told the Lord to do for you, he will do it now. 
the Holy Spirit in Christians. Except you have not prayed at all. You have said something to the Lord. I don't know what the Lord knows. I will just pray with you now. And it is done. Gracious Father, thank you very much. Your word has come forth. You have taken us through your word. That this Holy Spirit that is with us will be in us. And when the baptism takes place, takes place, it comes on us. And your desire, Father in heaven, is that as it comes into us, even our minds, even our hearts, our reasoning, our thinking, our feeling, our acting, everything we prove that we are your children. Even this moment, do we fall short of that? Father, by reason of the prayers we have said, correct all for us in the name of Jesus. I desire, Lord, our God, that as we live here, we will reason correctly, we will think correctly, we will feel correctly, we will make decisions correctly, we will act correctly, that truly we will be said to be heirs and joint heirs with your son, children of the kingdom. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.